Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Brian uh, Schmidt. I am uh, the EdTech Marketing Manager here at Capstone um, and super excited for you guys to be with us um, today specifically um, because we are getting to uh, walk you through the very first look um, at a Pebble Go extension unlike anything we've done. Um, so as you all know, you'll be learning about Pebble Go Create here in a little bit, but before we get started, um, we'd love to just know um, where you're all joining us from today. Um, and if you have experience using Pebble Go currently, and if you have experience with uh, using Buncee. So, um, but we will get started here literally in less than a minute. Um, and just uh, wanna make sure you guys have uh, plenty of opportunity to ask questions. You're gonna hear me say it throughout the presentation today. Um, but very excited to get to uh, just share with you uh, something that I know I speak for all of us on the capstone side of things and, and our new Buncee uh, family. Uh, we are beyond thrilled uh, to get to share this with you. Um, so um, people keep pouring in, I'm sure, um, but we are right at 3.30 and want to be uh, obviously respectful of everybody's time. So again, for any of you who have joined since uh, we started uh, admitting people into the room, um, my name is Brian Schmidt. I am the EdTech Manager with Capstone. Um, so I have the privilege of getting to work with Pebble Go and um, I'm super honored to be able to get to walk you through um, our new extension to Pebble Go called Pebble Go Create with Buncee. So um, really the big theme for today is we wanna show you how you can unleash your K through five students creativity um, and really use that for some uh, powerful, powerful learning um, within Power Pebble Go like never before. So, Obviously, I just introduced myself, um, but I'm going to go ahead and let Shannon uh, introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the District Teacher, Librarian, and Innovation Director at Van Meter Community School in Iowa. I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shannon and Miller, and I blog a lot on the Library Voice dot com. So it's great to be here with you today. Thanks, Shannon. And yes, she is a regular blogger, as most of you probably already know. But if you don't, um, the library voice is uh, definitely one of the best you can find in terms of just creative inspiration about uh, using a number of different uh, books and tools that are available out there. So highly recommend her. Thank you. Um, so before we begin, some of the housekeeping that uh, some of you might know I do. Um, but want to make sure for any of you who uh, this is your first time, um, we really um, encourage uh, questions, um, especially with this because uh, Pebble Go Create is new and there's things that uh, you know may make sense that we need to answer for you. So um, share your questions uh, through the Q and A area or uh, through the chat. Either way, um, and I will do my best to get to them at the very end. Um, we have a couple people in uh, the chat as well, probably, that'll be able to answer uh, different things throughout. But if your question's not gotten to, um, rest assured, we will do our darndest to get that uh, answered for you. Um, also, do not worry at all about taking uh, in-depth notes. We are recording this webinar, as we try to do with every single uh, one of these, so that you can uh, re-watch it, um, share it out with colleagues, um, you know, I really just uh, want you to be able to experience this and uh, not have to worry about getting every word down. And then the other thing that is super powerful, and we continue to see this time and time again, is just the uh, impact that uh, social media can have in terms of being able to uh, get inspiration and be able to uh, elevate some of the things that are happening in the classroom and the libraries uh, across the country with Pebble Go. And now very much so uh, excited to see what this is going to look like with Pebble Go Create. So um, definitely join the conversation and uh, check us out and uh, see what the conversation uh, is going to help you to be able to do. So a little bit about what to expect from today. Um, we'll go through and I will introduce you to Pebble Go. Um, we'll talk about what it is, um, how it's meant to help uh, educators and students, uh, and then talk a little bit about some of the key uh, features that are going to really uh, benefit um, schools and uh, communities throughout the country now. Um, and then we'll take a uh, in-depth tour. Not sure what happened there, one sec. Sorry, everybody, got booted out for some reason. 
Um, and then we'll go through and Shannon will uh, talk about uh, ideas and inspiration using Pebble Group Create uh, in a school setting. And then, like I said, we will definitely have time for Q&A. So um, without any further ado, let's talk about what is Pebble Group Create. Um, so at its core, it is meant to be the ideal extension uh, for any Pebble Go customer. So if you own um, the complete suite of Pebble Go uh, offerings or Pebble Go Platinum package, or you own just one module, um, Pebble Go Create is a great um, extension you can add into your Pebble Go experience um, that provides a digital workspace for your students. And the key around this is we wanna be able to connect um, the learning that is happening within Pebble Go and has happened for the last 12 years, but really gives your students a direct way to demonstrate what they're learning and then to be able to share that knowledge. Um, and really the whole premise around this is we know that it, students are um, in a position of their life where they want to be able to share using different tools and media. Um, and that really does help them to retain more essential concepts that they're gonna need for um, academic success now and in the future. So it is a big step for us to be able to link over um, that learning that is taking place and be able to give uh, teachers and librarians and parents a way to see what their uh, students are learning. So one of the big things that I always try to think about with um, any of our uh, offerings within Pebble Go is how is it meant to help? And so don't worry about notes here. There's some more in-depth information on the website, but four concepts that I really wanna focus on is uh, when we say click and create, it's really meant to um, showcase it is a simple, easy way um, for students uh, through a number of different media types to be able to showcase what they're learning um, and be able to um, express themselves. And that goes for the youngest students all the way into your uh, more advanced uh, students as they uh, journey through elementary school. So they'll be able to draw, type, uh, record a video, record audio, uh, use QR codes as a sharing mechanism, a lot of different functionality that's gonna be built into uh, Pebble Go Create. Um, additionally, the other piece to highlight here is it really it's easy setup. So these two kind of go hands in hand. Click and create is the simplicity for your students and the easy setup and maintenance is um, on the teacher and administrator side. Um, really one login is gonna allow students to access your Pebble Go subscription and your, uh, the Pebble Go create workspace. Um, so they'll be able to navigate seamlessly within the Pebble Go experience. And even more importantly, they'll be able to easily share um, their work both with their parents or uh, classmates, but even easier than that, the teacher will be able to see in real time uh, what her students or his students are doing. Um, the big thing that I think I'm probably most excited about with what Pebble Go Create is gonna allow us to do um, is be able to provide a um, space for real authentic and portfolio assessment. Um, so now teachers are gonna have easy access to each student's creations um, and really the Big takeaway is this real-time in, uh, insights. You'll be able to access uh, every student's uh, creations that they're working on, their buncies. Um, and really the nice part is be able to see without them having to save or be able to, uh, or having to share directly what they're working on in real time. Um, and that way you can be able to see exactly um, what your students are learning and what they're mastering. Um, and then additionally, the big thing we, we all know, and for any of you who've been on um, any of our past webinars over the last 18 months, um, one of the biggest struggles is all the logins in this world that students, uh, you know, even five-year-olds are having to manage. Um, and really we wanted to make it a seamless process for logging in. Um, and so creating this one platform and one, uh, one portal for student login is super important. Um, so that way your students are getting into one thing and accessing it really easy. Um, and then additionally, um, just in brief, is the setup and maintenance piece. Really, you know, syncing rosters uh, has never been easier. Uh, you know, and this goes if you're a Google Classroom or you use Microsoft to sync your rosters for school, um, or if you manage it all through CSVs, any of those are possible. Um, and it makes it super easy to be able to set up classes for teachers um, and get you into doing the things that you're all about, which is teaching, not necessarily the uh, setup piece. So, um, so that is high level what we're hoping to really help with um, in Pebble Go Create. Um, 
now the next question and we'll jump into more specific but i want to really make this pretty simple um, in terms of how easy this is going to work um, breaking it down into three steps really students will click uh, a create button which you'll notice um, super small screen so i apologize but we will get into a more uh, uh, easier to see view there will be a create button right at the bottom alongside all their other media they already experienced in a Pebble Go article. So nothing is changing about their article except one extra button when they sign in. Um, once they click that, it opens up in a new tab, um, this other screen, where they'll have a couple different options to um, either create a blank template uh, or from blank or start um, with a ready-made template um, to show and tell what they know. So it literally is a simple process and I am excited to take in the next step, which is to actually show you what this actually looks like in practice. So let me jump on over to the demo. Okay. Um, so what you'll notice is we are assigned into Pebble Go. Um, I will quickly re-reference one thing, um, the sign-in process. Um, the, little bit different in that now because they're student uh, individual student accounts uh, the sign in will be slightly modified but they'll either sign in with their google account or microsoft account or um, uh, a buncy uh, version of the sign in process so that that way uh, individual student accounts can be tracked for purposes of tracking uh, work that is done um, but once they're in you'll notice it is going to be very much the experience you come to know and expect um, from Pebble Go. So nothing uh, concretely is changing at all about that process, which is important uh, for kids is too much change, uh, obviously is never a good thing. So we're gonna journey down into uh, what mo most of you probably know is my favorite article in Pebble Go, which is frogs. Um, so everything so far has been the same. Um, you'll see the tabs up here um, all the functionality um, that has always been in Pebble Go um, is here. And then it's along the bottom, like I mentioned, there's a new button uh, when they're signed in that says create. Um, and just by clicking this button, um, you'll notice it opened up here in another tab. So their Pebble Go experience is still over here. Right here, they can navigate back simply or they can come back to their um, Buncee selection part for Pebble Go create. So, like I mentioned, they'll be able to create a new Buncee from scratch in a blank template, uh, ready-made activity, or view their previous Buncees. So over here on the left, we'll start by just looking at what a blank template looks like. Um, so it's exactly like you expect, blank. Um, they can start by adding a background if they want, um, or they can just jump right in and start doing some uh, adding of media really easily. So if you have ever been in Buncee before, a lot of these functionality look very familiar. Um, they've been intentionally designed now um, for that uh, younger student, but really meant to bridge K through five. So whether it's your kindergartner getting in here and needing to understand what these icons represent or uh, your fifth grade students, it'll work for um, that whole range of uh, kids. So they'll be able to add text, shapes. Uh, they'll be able to draw with a uh, fun, uh, engaging uh, drawing mechanic. Uh, there'll be animations uh, in there, so animated stickers. Some stickers we'll take a look at here in a second, show you what that'll look like. Uh, word art, emojis, uh, there's web image, web images they have access to, uh, any images that they can upload from their device. Uh, they'll be able to record video right within here, take photos, and then like I mentioned, that QR code. So we'll start by taking a look over here at what it looks like when they pick uh, stickers, because again, that kindergartner or first grader, a lot of times they're gonna be all about putting those stickers in right away. Um, so you'll notice one thing's happened here that uh, obviously takes us a little more directly, but if kids are in the Frogs article, right up top of their uh, Buncee here, you'll see it, it picked up that title of the article. So kids will know, hey, I'm doing a Frogs um, related Buncee. Teachers will be able to see that real easily too. So then uh, the student would enter frogs in here and then it pulls up the list of frog stickers and they can literally just drag and drop or click and drop and it goes right into their, uh, their Buncee. Um, additionally, the video recording. Um, so they'll be able to record video and then place video um, directly within this as well. So again, especially for your pre-readers or pre-writers, um, this is a really powerful tool for them to be able to express themselves and say what they're learning and what they learned 
um, from the article they were reading in their own words. Um, and so we know that's getting used a lot. Um, but really good set of tools that um, you're going to see in in some cases be amazed by all the things your uh, you know little little youngest students can do all the way to your oldest um, and just see some really fun creative projects and I'm excited because Shannon will show some of the stuff in action too in terms of some of the ideas that can be used so um, let's go back um, I'll undo that and then we'll jump back here and look at an activity so these activities are the ready-made here you go, easy template for a teacher or librarian to uh, direct their students to, to do show and tell. So it's really, this example is, I just read a Frog's article. So show me what you're learning and tell me a little bit about what you uh, learned or liked in that article. Um, again, all the same um, tools are here. It's just now a ready-made template that it makes it that much easier for uh, students of all ages to be able to jump right in and uh, showcase what they're learning. So just to show an example of what kind of content might be put in uh, something like this, over here, um, a student has decided to uh, use the drawing tool combined with some stickers to show uh, where frogs live. Also using some text functionality over here to say what they learned about small, uh, small frogs uh, and what they eat, and then recording what they learned over here in uh, a video. So super simple to do. Um, and the nice part is this can be as simple or robust as uh, the student and or the teacher wants to make it. Um, so a lot of flexibility in here. And that's super exciting to be able to showcase the learning. And then we will also jump over here too, because this is a cool feature. Students will be able to see past work as well. So like I mentioned, we were just in here looking at this Pebble Go Frogs article. Or, and then they jumped over and created this Buncee and here it is in here. Um, this is super powerful because kids can look back on their learning and then share their learning uh, with their uh, classmates. They can share it with their parents. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, real powerful capabilities here um, to be able to showcase learning for uh, students. And again, it's all tied within uh, their Pebble Go experience. So we're gonna jump on back and there's another path I'm really eager to show which is uh, jumping over here to uh, the teacher experience. Because like I mentioned, we wanted to make this a great experience for students, but we also wanna make sure teachers can access uh, this really powerful tool and use it for assessing uh, learning. So once signed in, again, a teacher would sign in with his or her credentials. And then uh, this uh, option pops up under their capstone menu under in Pebble Go. And then by clicking create, they're brought right to their view. So you'll notice this teacher has um, a number of different classes set up. Um, can sync it from a Google Classroom if they wanted to create a new class. Super easy to do, um, as many of you already know. Um, and then we'll take a look at what that experience is to dive into a class. So we'll take a look at the homeroom. Um, and then here's a list of all their students assigned to that class. And the teacher can jump in and literally see um, work of students, both past and in progress. So really cool functionality there that, um, again, provides a real portfolio of assessment and the teacher can easily um, see what a student is learning and that a student is learning and mastering certain concepts um, right within a, a robust platform. And also being able to show a uh, journey of learning. So where a student might've started out um, a month ago and where they are now. Um, just by being able to jump in and take a look and say, wow, okay, clearly uh, Katie here got, uh, got this right, that frogs do eat bugs and worms. And that was one of the things I was trying to teach or one of the uh, concepts we want to get across is that basic learning. So again, this has a lot of potential and capabilities here that I think um, as we looked at some really narrow examples, but I can imagine a lot of ways that uh, teachers, uh, librarians, uh, and honestly, students even are going to use this in some fun ways. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to jump over into taking a look now um, at some ideas and inspiration um, with Pebble Go. So before I hand it off to Shannon uh, to showcase, I want to show you just examples of the different templates and what those are meant to do. 
So the templates um, that are ready-made, um, they are going to connect here directly with um, the module and article they're in. So um, as you probably are familiar with, Pebble Go is color-coded for students. So for instance, um, animals articles use orange as the main color of that button. Same will be the case with the backgrounds. So if they're an animals article, the background will be orange. That'll be a really good color cue for both students and teachers to be able to see um, what Buncee they're working on. Um, but again, like I mentioned before, it picks up to the name of the article that they're in when they jump over to Buncee. So just to show a couple other examples, um, this one would be from the uh, science module because of the green, you'll notice that. And then this one comes from uh, the earth article specifically. And then um, this one is a biography. The blue color is clearly there. Um, and this is an Abraham Lincoln example. Um, the one thing I didn't point out, um, this isn't just uh, something that can be used in Pebble Go. So with the K through two piece, but it also is gonna be um, within Pebble Go Next as well. So your third through fifth grade students will have this capability. So super powerful, really, um, I'm super excited obviously to share it, but more excited to uh, see how librarians, teachers and students use this tool for some amazing learning opportunities. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Shannon and she will talk about uh, some of her ideas and inspiration. Okay, we'll make sure that you can see my screen. I got to move my thing here. You're seeing your calendar yeah. right now, Shannon. I had there to, you, don't you love it when it pops out of everything and <laughs> there it goes. Okay, now we're set, right? Okay, set. So, good. Well, I love listening to all of the things and seeing just a little glimpse into how we're going to be able to use Buncee within um, Pebble Go because I've used Buncee for a long time with my kids. So I am thrilled that it is now Pebble Go Create because it's going to offer so many great opportunities for our kids around each one of the Pebble Go modules. And so what I thought I would do today is just take a little tour of the modules and show you a few ideas. And we've used this with our kids, I think ever since Buncee started and we've used Pebble Go too, just for a long, long time. And our kids, even our little ones, have so much fun and such success with how they use Buncee and they have used these together and have smashed them up for a long time from the time that they're even in kindergarten TK all the way up to our kids when they go on to um, upper elementary and middle and high school. And so we have used Buncee in so many different ways, but when we're using it, especially with Pebble Go, I think finding that connection is so natural. And so I'm going to just show some ideas and we're going to start with animals and our kids, they love researching any kind of animal. They especially love when they go into dinosaurs. And so kids, when they were in dinosaurs, they could simply create just from a blank template by putting in just like a color and some of the stickers and they could choose a dinosaur that they wanted to talk about. And we teach our kids, I was working with them yesterday on the cats versus dog. And I'm gonna share that in a little bit uh, project and even our first graders, you know, teaching them how to keep a tab open for your Pebble Go and a tab open for your Buncee and be able to, you know, navigate all the things that they're finding. And so when they're together, I'm so excited because it's going to make even more sense to the kids and be even easier, I think, for all teachers to be able to navigate that too and librarians. And so by doing this, they can then show what they have learned about dinosaurs. And one thing cool too about Buncee is kids can even add like their voice or sound over any sticker. And so our kids love it when they make any kind of Buncee with an animal or a dinosaur or a person, they love being able to click on that sticker then and add their voice to it too. And so it would just look like this when they were actually um, seeing it. Now, one cool thing that's going on right now from our friends at Capstone is cats versus dogs. And our kids are going crazy 
for this at Via Meter. And this is free for everyone. Um, it's the whole month of November. And so we have been doing a lot with this. And yesterday, the first graders, they had so much fun because they did a little research in cats and in dogs. And they picked not only why they loved one better than the other, but they even did it to talk about maybe why they didn't like the other one. And so by just adding like a background and then adding those shapes, like Brian showed, you can add two shapes and then kids can fill those in like a square on maybe like on this one, why they didn't like cats so much, but why they really like dogs. And so by doing this, they can then participate in the cats versus dog and even that voting too. And so we voted online. The cool thing <clears throat> about cats versus dogs is everybody is voting online, but we're also doing just a little voting within our school too. And so we're excited to see who wins right now? I think it's dogs, but you never know what will happen. The next one is science and lots of different topics in science that tie into the curriculum. And so it's always a really great thing for me as a librarian to be able to go in and co-teach and collaborate with the teachers around science. And of course, during this time of year, we have lots of fall topics especially for our younger grades. And so I do a lot with our TK and kindergarten and even our first graders in the fall around these different topics that we find within Pebble Go. And our kids, they go on field trips and they go to the apple orchard and they go to a farm and they go to the pumpkin patch. And so by making a buncee, they could make a buncee maybe as they were researching these topics, or they could make a buncee even after they went on these field trips, if it was virtual or even in person. But I love the drawing tool because they can go in and take a slide. They could add some stickers and some text, but they could even then take that drawing tool and like draw falling leaves or draw a pumpkin patch or whatever it might be. And so that drawing tool is really important for our kids especially those who really love to personalize it with their drawing and the ones who like art a lot, we see them draw these just great little pictures in it. So that is a, a really fun one. Now to go along with their little trip to the apple orchard, we went into biographies and they studied Johnny Appleseed and the biographies that they have are so appropriate for our younger ones too. And so our kids, they took what they learned in that biography about Johnny Appleseed. And then they went in and they learned in the science part about apple harvest. And we took the kids on some virtual field trips, just using our merge goggles before they actually went to the apple orchard. And so they're able to go and they scan these QR codes. And then it took them to a couple apple orchards that weren't in Iowa. And so they learned even more and then they can put that together in a buncee. And our kids, they love learning about Johnny Appleseed. And there's a great book in Capstone Interactive, a cantata one with a song about Johnny Appleseed. But one thing that they love that they always talk about is in the science article about apple harvest that there's 75 hundred kinds of apples. Like that's a huge thing for kids to kind of wrap their heads around. And so they could then put that into a buncee to create something that they can show what they learn, that knowledge that they have. The next is in social studies and just, again, lots of great topics in social studies. And one, especially this week, as we talk about Veterans Day, this is an article that we use with all of our elementary as we are um, recognizing our veterans and making sure that we're talking about what that means to all of our kids and, and to our community. And so I put together a choice board and our kids were able to visit that Pebble Go article and these books that are in Capstone Interactive. And then what our kids did, we've done this for the last couple of years, is they made these amazing buncees that we then send to veterans all over Iowa in the veteran homes. And last year we had over 500 Buncees that we then sent around on just a Buncee board. And it was so great because the kids adding their backgrounds and their drawings and pictures, and even what they learned within that article and those books, as you can see, it meant so much 
to our kids to create these, but think about, you know, what it meant to our veterans as well. The last one is health. And one thing that I love, I love all the articles about health, and this is the newest one um, module from Capstone and Pebble Go, but I really love the ones, the articles about SEL topics. And so within feelings and emotions, you could use this as even a check-in with your kids. If it's at the beginning of the day or maybe the end of the day, and they can go here and they can read about feelings and emotions, maybe what they're feeling, if they're feeling really happy on that day. And then they can take that and make a buncee about how they're feeling. And so it's a great little check-in with your kids to be able just to see, you know, how they're feeling. But I love too to pair it up as a librarian and as a um, working with our teachers in the classroom is there's lots of topics too, just about like digital citizenship, um, media, the health of our kids. And I think that's so important also right now, just like SEL, it's so important. Our kids have been online so much and our families, they might need even options to talk and have conversations around these things too. And so by going there, doing a little research and reading together, either by themselves or even as a class, they can put these together. And the one around digital footprints was great at the beginning of the year because we actually then went to Buncee and they were able then to make their own little digital footprint just by finding a simple template and then adding things about their own digital footprint. And so this student was able to pull in the stickers that then represented himself. And so those topics are so important for our kids, um, so important for us as librarians, but also our classroom teachers and even our families too. And so just lots and lots of ways. I, I can't even wait for all of this to be something that we can all use because we use it you know, every day at our school. And there are so many ways that I think just possibilities that we haven't even done. And so we're really excited about this. Awesome. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Um, so before I get into questions, um, just want to make sure a couple of key things here about uh, Pebble Go Create. So Pebble Go Create is an extension to your Pebble Go account. It'll be a separate uh, uh, price not associated with your Pebble Go account. Um, connect with your uh, local rep um, who you work with already to um, see what that price is going to be in your specific situation. Um, again, not trying to shirk price uh, conversation, but we do know um, all our different um, schools and districts um, are on different um, discounts because of multi-year and multi-school discounts. So it's not really for me to give out one one price. Um, additionally, want to make sure too, it is a, probably a little uh, less than clear. Um, Pebble Go Create is an extension specifically onto your Pebble Go account. Um, if you have Buncee, that's a separate piece. Um, and as many of you know, that Buncee experience, um, if you are a uh, current customer, is super robust um, with some functionality. Um, this is meant to be a very uh, simple way for students to access uh, Pebble Go uh, create within Bunce, or within Pebble Go. Um, so there's going to be functionality in your Buncee account that you aren't going to uh, experience in Pebble Go create. Um, and so those two are actually separate things altogether. Um, additionally, some I got some good questions that I'm going to take back um, and actually ask our team to make sure to clarify. And I will uh, respond to you all um, actually one on one via email with some of the questions. Um, there is a good question in here about what is a Buncee board. So a Buncee board is a collection of Buncees uh, that a teacher can make and share out with her students um, or librarians do this all the time uh, as well. Um, or students might make collections of their Buncees. So when you hear the word Buncee board, that's what that is. Um, and additionally, um, I will get a lot of other questions answered because I still see them coming in and this is great. Um, want to make sure to you all know um, this is set to launch in early 2022 um, when we have a solid date rest sure that information will come to you um, is one of the first people to know um, definitely shooting in that january time frame and we will give a specific date as soon as we have it um, if you have additional questions um, 
the best contact for you um, for most questions is going to be your capstone representative um, they'll be able to help uh, walk you through a demo answer additional questions you might have uh, but also feel free um, to reach out uh, via the website um, there is a contact us form there um, or any of the other uh, people you know of to reach out Shannon is a good source for uh, inspirational kind of questions and ideas as she is a Buncee expert, um, but we are all here to answer questions additionally. So um, like I mentioned, this is not at all an overstatement on my part. This is the most exciting thing I think I've gotten to be a part of um, since joining uh, Capstone a few years back. Um, knowing now that we're gonna give uh, students and educators in their hands a super powerful tool to actually demonstrate learning, um, that we know has been going on in Pebble Go really helps take uh, that Pebble Go experience up to the next level and makes it infinitely more useful um, day in, day out for teachers. Um, and again, this is a tool that can be used in the classroom. So if you're one-to-one, -one, great, or in a remote setting for snow days or whatever else may come up. Um, so we're just really excited about what's to come and what's next. Um, so if you have questions, definitely let us know. Um, the other thing I'll do is a final uh, housekeeping piece. Uh, remember, you will be sent out an email tomorrow that will have in there for you a recording of the webinar for you to share. Um, there will also be in there for you uh, the slide deck. Um, so any of the links that Shannon references will be in there and you can uh, reference through that. And then there will be a certificate of attendance as well. So um, definitely appreciate your time. Again, let us know uh, what, what we can do to help answer additional questions. Um, and I am uh, just absolutely pleased that I have the opportunity to get to share this with you and give you the very first look at Pebble Go Create. Uh, so stay tuned for more information and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you all so very much.